I love that fire, that crackle. Doesn't it make you want to like build a fire in the backyard and get out the marshmallow sticks and make some s'mores? I mean, doesn't that sound yummy? I'm kind of ready for the warmer weather so we can do that again, right? Well, hello. I am Pastor Rachel, for those of you that don't know me. And I am super excited to continue our sermon series with you tonight, I'm In. Each week in this sermon series, you are going, the titles are going to start with a letter I in. So tonight, we are going to be talking about I'm invaluable. Last week, Pastor Kathy talked to us about how we are invited. And she talked to us about how we are invited to the table, just like that woman who anointed Jesus with her, with her hair and her tears. Um, and who was, she was a sinful woman, but Jesus accepted her and invited her in. You, we are in, all invited to the family of God, just like she is. Tonight, my goal is to show you how invaluable you are. Then over the following weeks, we're going to look at how you are influential and how you are invested. And we are all of that, and we're going to show you how that works. Did you know that you are invaluable? Did you know that? Well, you should because you are. You are invaluable to the work of God. You are invaluable because you are uniquely created child of God. When you hear the word invaluable, you may think that it means no value. What it actually means the exact opposite of that. Invaluable means priceless, indispensable, irreplaceable. There can be no value, no monetary value placed on you. So really, by saying that you are invaluable, that means that you have so much value, there's no way we could add a price to it. It's often the opposite of what we feel, isn't it? A lot of times we feel like we're worthless, we have no value, we're not important, or we're unworthy, you name it, you've been there, you know. Well, all of that is wrong, so get that out of your head. A lot of times we look at other people and we are wowed by all that they can do, right? Um, I love David's prayers. He just he brings the he brings the spirit when he prays. I love that. And then there's the smarty marties in the group that can rattle off Bible scriptures like that. And you're like, I want to be like that. You know, um, there's just all kinds of that. And I want to talk to you more about that. But before I do, I want to pray. I should have done that before I started, but we need to invite God into this message. Father God, we invite you here today into this building, into this place and through the camera, our, peop our friends out there um, on the internet. God, we invite you here to be in this place, to be in this message, and to show us how incredibly invaluable we all are for your kingdom work. God, would you come into this room and would your Holy Spirit pour out in abundance tonight? We thank you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're all a family, right? When you accept Jesus, you become a member of the family of God. Um, our band just left the platform and if one of those members is missing, we know it, right? Right? For the last couple of weeks, who's been missing? Have, Amy's missing. She brings something special. When Jim is missing, we don't have our lead guitar and our vocals. Well, you can't go on vacation, Jim, because you'll be missing. Sam brings the bass, and Alan's been missing off the rotation, and we've been missing Alan. We miss Alan. Um, you know, they have unique individual roles to play in the band, but when they come together, they're the band. You know, they are the Freedom House worship band. Jesus tells this parable of a lost sheep, and in this parable, the shepherd's got these hundred sheep, and he's out there doing his shepherd thing, and one of them wanders off. Well, that sheep is so valuable to that shepherd that he leaves the 99 and goes off to find the one. That sheep is valuable. Let me put it to you another way. This is a purple pen. 
I love purple pens. There's nothing special about this purple pen. It's just a big pen. And if I had a hundred of them and I lost this one, it would be no big deal, right? It's just a big pen. You are not a big pen. You are not a big pen. You are a priceless child of God. Um, you were created with a plan and a purpose. God has kingdom work for you to do. And one of the hardest things for us to hear and to believe is that we have value because oftentimes we are squashed and we're told that we're worthless or you can't do that, you're not good enough or whatever else the world has told us in our lifetime. But when God created you, he placed you in this moment of time in history for a purpose. You are uniquely prepared and qualified with gifts, talents, and abilities that are needed today. You are invaluable to God's work. The Apostle Paul has a great way of showing us this. He has this great illustration that he uses. And, you know, in the Corinthian church, they were just like us. They were really no different. There were a lot of folks there that worked hard for their money. They were not raised with a silver spoon in their mouth. Um, and they had the same issues that we have. We got to pay the bills. We got to go to the doctor. We got to raise the children. We got to put food on the table and, and all of this. And some of them may have had what would be considered demeaning jobs or jobs that are worthless. But those jobs are important, right? So he talks about the body. So if, we, if you want to open up your Bibles or your Bible app to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that's where we're going to be hanging out today. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, Just as a body, though one has many parts, but it all has many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. So you have one body and you're all these different parts, right? The human body has lots of different parts. You've got your eyes and your ears and your nose and your feet and your arms and your legs, right? We all have that. And they all make a part of your body. Well, just like the human body, the body of Christ, you and me, we all have a part to play. So I want to play a little game with you. It's interactive. I'm going to show you a picture, and I want you to tell me, um, I'll, I'll tell you what, you, what they, so you're going to see some animals, and you're going to know what that is. What is that? What is a lion, a group of lions called? Okay, show me the next one. Pride, exactly. So it's a pride. So the next one is an elephant, right? We all know that's an elephant. What is a group of elephants called? A herd. How about a cheetah? Not a cheeto, but a cheetah. What is a group of cheetahs called? Do you know? Hungry? <laughs> Close. It's called a coalition. It's called a coalition. I did not know that. I, I, I learned this doing this tonight. Um, how about the next picture? Uh, what are these? They're crows, right? What do, you, do you know what a group of crows is called? A murder. There's nothing good about that. <laughs> it, doesn't it make you think of an Alfred Hitchcock movie? You know, the birds? I, that's what I think of. How about the next one? Those are donkeys. Okay, be careful with this one. <laughs> what is a group of donkeys called? <laughs> not exactly. They're called a pace. I did not know that. <laughs> exactly. Be nice, Tracy. <laughs> so what is the next one? Those are vultures. Do you know what a group of vultures is called? A group of, not quite, go ahead and show, show them what the answer is. A committee. <laughs> so, I mean, there's all kinds of things to give me said about that, and I'll let you imagine. So what do we see with this? What are you seeing with this? Each animal individually has its own name or identity, right? But when you group them together, they take on a new name and a new identity. They Think about that. A single animal has one name, but when you group them together, they have a new identity. So what do we call a person who has surrendered to God or to Christ? What do you call them? A Christian, a Christ follower. 
what do you call a group of people who have surrendered? The church or the body of Christ. Together, as the church, we are the body, the body of Christ. When we surrender to Christ, we become a new identity and we have a new purpose. We have a kingdom purpose. You are his hands and feet to serve people in his name. You are his hands and feet to go and take the gospel and share the good news. You are his mouth when you encourage and lift up and share the good news. You are his heart when you love the unlovable, the hurting, and those who feel far from God. You are invaluable. And when the enemy tries to convince you that you have no value, I want you to say, no, I am a child of God, and I am a member of the body of Christ, and I have value. Every part of the body matters. Uh, second, or 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 17 says this, Even so, the body is not made, of, made up of one part, but of many. Now the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not, be, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Every part of the body matters. And sometimes we feel like our part doesn't matter. But look how Paul describes it. He contrasts each part, doesn't he? Each part has a function. If we were all an eye, how would we hear? Have you, I've never heard of anyone saying I had an ear-to-ear -ear conversation, right? Or when a couple is in love, they don't look longingly into someone's ear, right? No. Um, and if that's happening, something's wrong and you need to get help. <laughs> Think about movies and phrases you're familiar with. No one has seen for your ears only. No one has ever said beauty is in the ear of the beholder. How about you have stars in your ears? Or you're the apple of my ear? Those things are not, you know, there's not a thing. The ear could be tempted to say that I'm not important, but then there would not be anyone to hear it. Think about that. Every part of the body matters. Your part, your role, your opinion matters. Um, our next verse tells us that, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you has a part of it. Every part of the body matters. Are you getting it yet? Let's look at your hand. Take a look at your hand. We pick things up. We press buttons. We have to use our iPads and things, our phones. We use them all the time, right? The thumb gets lots of attention because we use it to grasp and hold, and it's what separates us from the animals, right? Because, you know, dogs don't have thumbs. It's a good thing, too, because my dog would get in lots of trouble. Yeah. Take a look at your pinky finger. It's tiny. It's weak. Mine's crooked. Um, it, it doesn't get a lot of attention, does it? You don't really think much about your pinky finger. Did you know that 50% of your hand's strength is in that little pinky finger? Yeah, I didn't believe it either. I had to look it up. Yeah, 50% of your hand's strength is in your pink pinky finger. It's an important part, isn't it? What about the uvula? You know, that little dangly thing in the back of your throat? You don't think much about that little guy until you get a sore throat, right? It's just the thing that hangs back there. Did you know that it acts kind of like a doggy door in your throat? When you eat that, and when you swallow, that uvula flings up and blocks, keeps the food from going up your nose? Yeah. And did you know that, it, <laughs> did you know that that little uvula has all these little pores in it that create saliva? Lots of saliva. 
enough saliva that over your lifetime it could fill two swimming pools. <laughs> you don't think about the uvula, do you? How crazy is that? And when you're talking and speaking, that's where your uvula helps to lubricate your mouth. And, and that's what helps you to roll your R's. Like, Rudy, roll your R for me. Yeah. Your uvula does that. Just because things are not visible doesn't mean they aren't important. Really, God created a uvula. Come on. We need the uvula. It, you know, you can live without it, but it's not as easy. And you are important. You are created by God. Just because what you do isn't as visible doesn't mean it's not important. Some of you are silent prayer warriors. You know who you are. These are the people you know you can count on at any time to pray. Uh, there are people in this room I know I can count on to pray. If I'm having a struggle or something's going on, there are a few people I know that I can send a text and say, X, Y, Z is going, God, going on right now, pray for me. And I know they will. And that makes a difference. That's not a visible thing. That's not an out in the world, you know, out on the billboard type of a ministry. But it is important. It is important to the body of Christ. It is invaluable. Some of you are great encouragers. Um, I can't tell you how many times I get a card or a text or an email from someone that just says thank you for doing what you do or, or whatever. And that is so encouraging to me. And I know Kathy would agree that when you get those encouraging emails or texts at just the right time, we live on that. That feeds our week. And again, it's an invisible thing. It's, it's a silent... It's a silent um, type of a thing that happens, but it's valuable. So often, parts that are considered small or less visible get taken for granted, don't they? And, and you, they never know that they made a difference. I can think back on my life where there were people that impacted me that probably never knew how they impacted me. I think of, of Graham Fay. I've talked about her before. She picked me up for church nearly every Sunday when I was a little girl, starting at nine years old. And when she couldn't pick me up, the church bus picked me up. It was not, a, it was not like a next door pickup. It was a good eight to 10 miles from my house to church. So it's like driving to Newburgh to get me or McMinnville. Um, but because they invested in picking up the, little, the quiet little girl from the north end of town, I'm here today. They have no idea how that ministry impacted my life. Um, Graham died before um, God smacked me upside the head with his call to preach. So she doesn't know that I'm here. And I know that she would be proud. And I would love to be able to say, Graham, because you picked me up from church, I am here today and I am preaching. That would be awesome. I would love to be able to do that. When you're obedient to God and use the gifts and talents and abilities that he's given you to make a difference, it makes a big impact. You may never know what kind of impact you've made on someone's life. And it may seem significant and small and unseen, but it can be the most impactful thing a person can encounter. You may never know what a few minutes, you, uh, the, the few minutes that you take to invest in someone a little girl that's nine years old makes for the body of Christ and for the church. You just don't know. Every part of the body matters. Psalm 139 tells us that for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You are important. God put you together. Before the foundations of the earth, God knew you were going to be here. You were created for this time and place. You were created with a plan and a purpose 
God knew who you were going to be before you were born. He knew the world needed your brand of you for this time in history. Someone needs what you can give. How many times have you had... How many times have you woken up from a deep sleep and you've had your arm over your head, you know, and you're sleeping like that, and then you try to move it and you flop it in your face because it's asleep? Scares the bejeebers out of you, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember the first time I did that, I was sleeping like this and I, I tried to move my arm and it fell on my face. And I seriously thought I'd had a stroke or something in my sleep because I didn't know what happened. I couldn't control my arm. It was asleep until the blood could flow again, Right. Essentially, what's happening is that your arm is paralyzed until the blood flows again, until that juice that keeps going into your arm to make it move. It's paralyzed. When you're not using the gifts, talents, and abilities that God gave you, you are paralyzed. It's like your arm is asleep. You're not doing any good. There's, not, there's nothing going on. Your function is broken. You have something unique to offer if you're not using your part of the body that God gave you, then other parts have to pick up the slack. Other parts have to pick it up. Needs aren't being met. Lives aren't being changed. Someone is missing out on the good news of Jesus and they're heading to hell. I know that sounds harsh, but it's the truth. If you're not using what God has given you, someone is missing out. Wake up, church. Don't be that dead arm. The church isn't the building. The church is the body. We are the church. This is a great building that we get to use, but this is, the building is not the church. The church is the people. The body of Christ needs you. Someone needs what only you can give. That word of encouragement, that prayer, that, that hug, that affirmation. And maybe someone needs to hear just from you. You are called. You are chosen. You are capable. You are invaluable to the work of God. So you say, well, what about my past and all the bad stuff I've done? What about my sins? Okay. Your past does not disqualify you. It prepares you. It gives you a testimony of a changed life. So you say, uh, my marriage has failed and there's no way that I can lead a Bible study. You could be the perfect person to help someone else heal. You are prepared to show others hope in their darkest days. You say, I don't know enough. I'm not smart enough. If you know Jesus and you love people, you know enough. You are prepared. You say, I can't minister because of my addiction. Your story of restoration and healing will inspire others. And you are uniquely equipped to minister to someone who has experienced the same thing that you have been through. You know, um, when Sam and I were young married, uh, our daughter, Elaine, was born six weeks early. She was premature. She was four pounds, 11 ounces. And um, when she was five weeks old, she caught RSV pneumonia and nearly died. Uh, we woke up in the middle of the night, um, and she was blue, and she was cold, and it was scary. It was probably one of the scariest moments of our lives. Um, so we immediately took her to the doctor, and we called the prayer chain, and there was a woman on the prayer chain that says, you know what? I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, which is when we woke up to take, to, to feed Elaine and found her that she was blue, and she says, I knew that I had to pray for your family. What's going on? She was an invaluable part of the body of Christ in the life of our daughter. Her prayers may have been the thing that woke me up. Her prayer started a whole chain of events. My daughter is now 27 years old, and she's still with us. But had that not happened, the story would have been different. Um, she got on the prayer chain and started calling all over the church. Um, we had people all over the world praying for Elaine because she woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's amazing, guys. Imagine with me for a minute what could be different 
if every part of the body of Christ was being used to its fullest. Think about your family. I've got two kids, a daughter-in-law, and two grandbabies. When we get together, I feel complete. It's pretty dang awesome. I love having my family together. But when one of them's missing, there's, it's like the arms asleep. You know, you're missing the part. It, it, it's, just, it's not complete. Their presence is missed. Your presence in the family of God matters. When you're not engaged and complete, it, when you're not engaged, it's incomplete. Imagine what the kingdom of God could be like if every member of the family of God was engaged. Imagine what Freedom House could be like if every member was engaged in the kingdom work of God that God has prepared for you to do. Okay, so I've got some numbers to throw at you, and I had to do a little digging for this. Freedom House is a small church with a big church heart, right? We have big church dreams. Did you know that this little church has an app? Have you downloaded our app? Have you got our app? If you don't have our app, you need to get it. Did you know that since we launched our app in June, we've had 121 downloads? In that time, our, launched has been apt, uh, ha, our app has been launched, meaning that it's been opened, 1,113 times. In the last 30 days, there have been 26 media plays. We have had 9,730 app impressions. I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, why is that number so big? What does that mean? Well, an, an app impression is... Um, it's the number of times that your app has been viewed in the, in the various app stores. So what, whatever, if you're an Android or, or, a, or a Apple, whatever. So that's how many times our app has been seen in the app store for more than a second. So someone's doing a search for whatever, and Freedom House pops up. So they have seen our app. Um, and they may have opened it up to look at it and see what is that. So 9,730 times our app has been looked at. Now imagine with me how our brand new app could impact the world for Christ if we reach those 9,730 people who looked at our app. Then what if those people came to know Christ because the people of Freedom House used their gift of prayer and interceded on their behalf? What if 1% of those people found Freedom House and called us their home? 1% is 97 people. That's a lot of people. Could you imagine? We'd be busting out the doors and need our own building, and we'd need a big one. <laughs> Can you imagine? Then what if one of those 97 new people were healed from lifelong pain and despair because someone took the time to care and meet their need? What if one of those 97 people answered God's call to go into the mission field and all the nations and spread the good news of Jesus overseas? What if one of those 97 was a young pregnant woman who's single and alone and scared and was desperate for hope? We can show her hope that God has more for her than her current circumstance, that she matters, that her baby matters. We could show her the love of Christ in tangible ways. The possibilities are endless. Endless! You know... We tend to think that things are possible, but with God, all things are possible. And we are part of his body, and we are engaged. All things are possible. You are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You could be the pinky finger or the uvula. Whatever your role is, it's important. You are invaluable. If you're not engaged in the work of God expressing the unique values and, and, and gifts that you were created for, if you're asleep, dormant, and paralyzed, then something that God needs done through you is not getting done. Your story matters. Your story could be the one thing that starts a person on a new path. Your gifts matter. Every time you pray, your prayers matter. Your faith can move mountains. Jesus tells us that. Your generosity matters. Every time you give, your gift matters. It doesn't matter how small it is, it makes a difference. Your words matter. When you invite someone to church, your invitation matters. It could change a life. Your encouragement matters. 
When you greet someone, when you listen to someone, when you open your home or make someone a meal, you are showing the love of Jesus and you make a difference. When you do the least of these things, you are being Jesus with skin on. Every part of the body needs the other part. You are part of the family God and the body of Christ. We need each other. Your part is uniquely designed to work with and complement another. When we work together, the impossible can be made possible. You have no idea how much each one of you are needed. You have no idea how your text or note of encouragement, you have no idea what that does for me and how that encourages me. When I receive a note or a text of enc- or an email, it, that just means so much. It's like food for the soul. It, 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 and your prayers carry us. You know, and I can promise you right now that I will do my part. I will do my part for the body of Christ. Will you do yours? Will you do your part? When we all do our part, the impossible is possible. I don't know about you, but I want this church to make a difference in our community. I want the community to be a better place because we're here. How about you? Wouldn't it be fantastic if the word on the street was that Freedom House is a church in town that makes a difference? That if you go to Freedom House, they're going to love you and they're going to meet your needs? If we all do our part, that can happen. Is the Holy Spirit stirring you to do more, to use those gifts, talents, and abilities that he's giving you to make a difference and do your part? Oh, gosh, I hope he, I hope he is. Answer his call. Wake up and use the invaluable gifts that you have given. I want to pray for you right now. God, you are awesome. You are mighty. You are amazing. And you have created us to be invaluable for your work, for your kingdom. God, I just pray for those right now who are feeling your stirring to do more for you, that you would just empower them to do more, to reach out and do those things that you need them to do. God, would you use this body today to reach Yamhill County to reach Dayton and make a difference in this community. God, would you give us the courage and the wisdom and the power to do that for you? God, we love you so much and are so grateful that you have created us to be invaluable for your kingdom. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to go out and be invaluable. Live up to that word. You matter. Love you guys.